This is the Will Kane Church of Christ in Alma, Texas. This is Wednesday, March 6, 2024. This is our prayer and praise Wednesday, the beginning Wednesday of each month. We take time to sing songs unto the Lord. We take time to read scriptures. And we take time to uplift prayers. And we have a message of encouragement at the end. This is what we've done uh, over 20 years ago to glorify the Lord. Kick off the month right. So without any further delay, let us go to our Heavenly Father and pray. Father God, the Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the only we have access to eternal life, we are forever grateful for your mercy and your grace. We thank you, Lord, for the strength you've given us, the love of the Holy Spirit, the love of your Son and you. We thank you, Lord, for the church, for all its blessings. We ask you, Lord, to continue to watch over us as we move forward with our lives as they are, and we may glorify your name no matter what state we may be in. Father, we come before you praying for Sister Trubina Fletcher, her family, as her sister has passed away, and also her uncle. We pray, Lord, you give the Fletcher family encouragement and strength. We pray, Lord, that you bless Sister Fletcher, very faithful, and Lord, that she will have strength to rise up and be able to glorify your name continually as she does now. We pray the children will be comforted, and Lord, we know that you're able to do this. We pray that the prayers will reach your heart to cause this pain of death to go away, where they can live with it, Father, for the rest of their life. Father, we ask you to continue to bless those that are sick here. Sister Rose Byers with MS, we pray we continue to strengthen her, Lord, to endure Sister Anyeka Anita Heiser with MS. We ask you to continue to strengthen her, Lord. She continues to battle through this uh, disease that is very traumatic to our bodies and our minds. Father, we ask you to continue to be with us as this service, we will sing songs, we will uplift prayers, and we will read scriptures to glorify your name. And we will have a message of encouragement toward the end to honor you forever. Dear Father God, we ask you please to protect all who are still in movement to arise to get here. We ask you, Lord, to bless those that have no desire to be here, that you forgive them prick their heart that we may be able to reach them at the next appointed time. We pray for those that wanted to be here but will not make it, that you comfort their heart, uplift them in a way where they will be encouraged and gather the next appointed time. Dear Father God, we continue to say all these prayers and requests in your Son, Jesus Christ, holy and righteous name. Amen. At this particular time, we will Go to our song books and we will pull up a song that will give God glory and he will be honored forever. 120, Victory in Jesus. 120, Victory in Jesus. If you have it, let us see. I heard an old, old story. Our Savior came from glory. How he gave his life on Calvary. To save a wretch like me, I heard about his groaning, of his precious blood atoning. Then I repented of my sin and won the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him. And all my love is to him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. I heard about his healing, of his cleansing power revealing. How he made the lame to walk again, and caused the blind to see. And then I cried, Did Jesus come and heal my broken spirit? And somehow Jesus came and brought to me the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is to him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. I heard about a mansion he has built for me in glory. And I heard about the street of gold beyond the crystal sea. About the angels singing 
and the old redemption story. And some sweet day I'll sing up the, the song of victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with his redeeming love. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is due him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. Amen. If you have your Bibles, please let us go together to the book of Psalms. The 119th division of the book of Psalms. And we will look at beginning verse number 1. We will start to read. Blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are are they that keep his testimonies and that seek him with the whole heart. They also do no iniquity. They walk in his ways. Thou hast commanded us to keep thy precepts diligently. All that my ways were directed to keep thy statutes. Then shall I not be ashamed when I have respect unto all thy commandments. I will praise thee with uprightness of heart when I shall have learned thy righteous judgments. I will keep thy statutes Oh, forsake me not utterly. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. With my whole heart have I sought thee. Oh, let me not wander from thy commandments. Thy word have I hid in my heart, that I might not sin against thee. Blessed art thou, O Lord. Teach me thy statutes. With my lips have I declared all the judgments of thy mouth. I have rejoiced in the way of thy testimonies, as much as in all riches. I will meditate in thy precepts, and have respect unto thy ways. I will delight myself in thy statutes. I will not forget thy word. May the Lord have a choice blessed to the readers, the hearers, and doers of his word. He will go to our Heavenly Father in prayer at this time during our prayer and praise service. Let us pray. Father God, the Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. By whom we have access to eternal life. Forever grateful are we for your Holy Spirit. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Father. Please receive our thanks for the multiple blessings the church, our families, our loved ones, the saints, all the people that serve and help us, that have taught us. Thank you, Lord, for our neighbors. Thank you, Lord, for the leadership of the church. Thank you for the faithful teachers of truth all around the world. Father, we ask and continue to bless this congregation that we will follow and not balk against the teaching of truth. Help the leaders, Lord, to not be weary and well done, but continue to persevere on as we are fighting for the salvation of our souls. Dear Father, we ask you, please, bless each and every member to hold fast the truth, cast away lies, prove all things, hold fast that which is good. Father, we pray at the end of the road we hear your Voice say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things, and now I will make thee a ruler over many. Into you in into the joy of the Lord. It will be more than enough, more than we deserve, Lord, and we will be sufficient to have a home with you forever and ever. Dear Father God, we ask these prayers be answered according to thy will, not ours. In Jesus Christ, holy and righteous name do we pray. Amen. Evening, Saints. Good to see everyone's faces this evening. Uh, please turn your Bibles to Psalms, chapter number 119. Psalms, chapter 119. Good to see everyone again. Amen. Psalms 119. We're going to have verse 25. My soul cleaveth unto the dust, quicken thou me according to thy word. I have declared my ways, and thou heardest me. Teach me thy statutes. Make me to understand the way of thy precepts, so shall I talk of thy wondrous works. My soul melted 
for heaviness. Strengthen thou me according to thy word. Remove from me the way of lying and grant me thy law graciously. I've chosen the way of truth. Our judgments have I laid before me. I've stuck unto the testimonies. O Lord, put me not to shame. I'll run the way of thy commandments, and thou shalt enlarge my heart. Amen. Amen. The singing. Yield not the temptation. There's time. That's page 380. 380. Okay, I have a little sing. Yield not to temptation for yielding. Thy bed for on word, dark fashion subdue. Look ever to Jesus, He will carry you through. Why don't you ask the Savior to help you? Come first, strengthen and keep you in He. Willing to aid you, he will carry you through. Shun evil companions, battling with disdain. God's name hold in reverence, nor take it in vain. Be thoughtful and He will carry you through. Why don't you ask the Savior to help you? Come for strength and keep you, and He is willing to aid you. He will carry you through. To Him that all come. Savior, our sin will renew. Look ever to Jesus, He will carry you through. Why don't you ask the Savior to help you? Comfort, strength, and keep you. God in prayer at this time. Let us pray. Holy Father, we come before you at this time. Thank you, Father, for allowing us to see this day. Thank you for your love, your mercy, and grace, Father, towards your seed. Yes. Father, to those who you called and separated for yourself to do your works, Father, here on earth. We thank you, Father, for we know because of your son's death, this is all possible. Because of your son's death, we're here. Father, we give thanks unto you and all, Father, your works that you do in our lives. We just ask that you be merciful towards us, Father, cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Father, guide us to see your word, Father, as it is written, yes. Father, and that we may not just see it, Father, but also hear it and believe it and do it, Father. Pray, Father, for those that are strayed away from the kingdom, Father, that they will remember the confession they made, the obedience and baptism. That they will come back to the fold, Father, before it's too late. Yes. That they will put you first, Father, and... Not to put, put the things of this world first. Father, we pray that you will heal any that are sick and afflicted. Father, through, through the multitude of trials, uh, temptations, Father, we pray that they may overcome all things. Father, we ask that you will be with the saints, Father, throughout the world. Yes. Those who are in uh, much sore affliction, Father. Mm -hmm. ask that you bless them and give them what they stand in need of. Thank you, Father, for all your love and mercy. 
We just ask that you continue to guide us here. Our leadership, Father, we may be one, the same mind, same judgment and speaking. And thinking, Father, we just ask that you will receive all the honor and glory and all that we do. We ask all these things in Christ Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Welcome to praise and worship. Man. Would y'all please turn your Bibles to Psalm 23. Man. <clears throat> Time is 7.20 p.m. Wednesday evening. Again, that is Psalm 23, a Psalm of David. And it reads, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you were with me your rod and your staff they comfort me you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies you anoint my head with all my cup overflows surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever Amen. may God have a blessing to the hearers and doers of his word would you all please bow? Dear beloved Father, we come to you, Lord, this evening. Thank you, Lord, for the many blessings that you have spared upon us. Yes. We also thank you, Lord, for waking us up and also giving us the health and also the strength, Lord, to, to be prepared for this day. Lord, we come to you, Lord, on behalf of all of us in here. We just thank you, Lord, for the things that you have done for us. Yes. For our, the roof over our head, for the food that you prepared for us on our tables, for the nourishment of our bodies. But, Lord, we come to you, Lord, on behalf of all of us in here. We just thank you, Lord, for also your grace and also your mercy. We know without you, Lord, we will be lost at this present time. But we thank you, Lord, for giving us the, the mindset, Lord, to comprehend to your word. And we just ask you, Lord, to give us the strength that we need, Lord, to persevere. Amen. Or what the devil is trying to do, with, do to us at this present time. Through our marriages, through our jobs, through our relationships with friends and family. We just ask you, Lord, to give us a peace of mind, Lord, to to comprehend to your word, Lord, so we can give to those who are lost at this present time. Amen. And we just ask you, Lord, to bring those back to church before it's everlasting late to the everlasting late for their souls. We come to you, Lord, at this time, Lord, for the bereavement. We just ask you, Lord, to, to, to give them strength that they need. We also ask you, Lord, to give them the the understanding that death is real, Lord, and, and that we're not here forever. We're just here part time, but we're just passing through. But Lord, we just give you, we just thank you, Lord, for for all the things you have done for us at this present time. We thank you, Lord, for giving us life as well. And we also thank you, Lord, for the people that you have put in our lives, Lord, the people that you have put in our lives to to give us the gospel so that we can listen. And we just thank you, Lord, for letting us be here. And at this time, Lord, we just thank you, Lord, for all the things you have uh, put before us. We just thank you, Lord, for not letting the devil get a, to get against us, Lord. We just thank you, Lord, for that. Yes. And we just thank you, Lord, for everything that you have uh, done for us this time. In Jesus' name we do our pray. Amen. 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 All right, your hymns. 
page 404, Heavenly Sunlight. Right. Again, that's page 404, Heavenly Sunlight. Let's sing. Walking in sunlight all my journey over the mountains through the devil. Jesus had said, I'll never forsake thee. Promise divine that never can fail. Heavenly sunlight, heavenly sunlight. Blood in my soul with glory divine. Hallelujah, I am rejoicing, singing his praises. Jesus is mine. Shadows around me, shadows above me, never conceal my Savior and God. He is the light, in Him is no darkness. Ever I'm walking close to His side. Heavenly sunlight, heavenly sunlight, flooding my soul with glory divine. Hallelujah, I am rejoicing. Singing his praises, Jesus is mine. In that bright sunlight, never rejoicing, pressing my way to mountains above. Singing his praises, gladly I'm walking, walking in sunlight, sunlight of love. Heavenly sunlight, heavenly sunlight, blood in my soul with glory divine. Hallelujah, yes, I am rejoicing, singing his praises, Jesus is mine. Amen. Hey man, good to see everyone yes, this Wednesday night yes. to uh, charge up our our midweek devotion batteries yes, sir. and get us ready for the rest of the week. Man. So good to see everyone and Amen. and hope and pray we know everything's not going good for everybody. But we're going, we're not going to complain, but it could be worse. I remember Amen. Sister Fletcher said that this weekend, huh? she, what she yeah. said about the lady who was struggling to get across the parking lot. So we're, we're grateful to you know grateful to be here to have an opportunity. Yes. I want to thank brother brother Javier for giving me an opportunity because he could be up here preaching. I know he's the brother's dynamic Amen. and come a long way. So yes, thank for giving me an opportunity to come up. Amen. Uh, so also today, I just want to make a short do a short lesson. I had one prepared that that was long, but I'm a short. This is, this is, I thought the night was uh forgot it was praise and worship. I got three jobs now, so I used to have one, so it's kind of hard to figure out what's going on now. Man. Yeah. I'm like Sister Fletcher, now I got, I got three jobs. I'm so glad you can get a rest at night because the body will be so aching and through the, during the day. You go to sleep and wake up, you feel a little bit more refreshed. Yes, sir. You know, my wife sent me a text the other day. She said she knew she was going to get old, but she said she didn't know it was going to be this fast. Mm. So I agree with her 100%. I agree with her 100%. Anyway, we're going to look at this uh, short lesson, uh, Depart from Me, Ye That Work in Equity. Amen. Depart from Me, Ye That Work in Equity, Matthew 8, 8 through 12. And we're going to read this introduction, and we're going to look at uh, some scripture, and then we're going to look at an example. We're not going to look at the whole example, but we hope the example that we look at is going to be one that we can all, we can all kind of relate to in our lives. I believe we can if we do that. Matthew 8, uh, verses 12, Matthew, uh, let's see, yeah, Matthew 8, 7. Now, we're going we're gonna to read, I'm sorry, I wrote the wrong scripture down. We're going to look at Matthew 7, 
verse number 13. And we're going to pull some thoughts from this for our lesson. Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in therein. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth into life, and true there be that find it. Beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are raving wolves. Ye shall know them by their fruit. Do men gather grapes of, of thorns, of figs, of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit. But a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth forth, bring not forth good fruit, is hewed down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their, by their fruit ye shall know them. Not every one that said unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father. Many will say, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have we not cast out devils? And in thy name done many wonderful works. And then, when I profess unto them, I never knew you, depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Mm. You know, uh, uh, this is the one I got the lesson text right here from. Sometimes we read it, and we read it because it's not for us. It's for somebody else. We're going we to say amen. But a lot of times, it's, it's for us. And I'm not saying anybody in the room, and I'm not saying myself. But there's some rules that, and guidelines that we all have to, to go by. Amen. And so this could be us. That's right. This could be us. So obviously, somebody has said this and done this. It says that um, um, not everyone, verse 21 says, not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter in. He says, so so the title is depart from me, ye that work iniquity. So this word iniquity means um, wickedness. That's what it means. Uh, unrighteousness. A transgress the law. A violation. Those are words that we hear, you know, in, in, in relative form as we go into the world. You know, I see signs say violate. You go to this door, you violate a or you do this, you violate a sign, you can't park here, it's a violation, don't park here. Mm -hmm. And so there's certain rules we have to 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 face uh, here every day in life, and that we have to obey those rules. Uh, 2 John 9 says, Whosoever transgress and abide not in the doctrine of Christ has not God. So, so yes, it is, it's, it's something that we do. We want to make sure we're careful and, uh, and do everything the Lord has commanded us to do. He has given us ways to, to repent of our sins and change our mind and not do those same things again. Many of us think that as long as we go to church, and I'm going to say the Church of Christ, Romans 16, 16. On the first day of the week, Acts 27, that we sing Hebrews 13, 15, Colossians 3, 16, Ephesians 5, 19. I go on and on. There, there's some more scriptures. Mm. We pray. 2 Thessalonians, I mean 1 Thessalonians 5 17, James 5 13 through 15, Psalms 14 through 6. Remember the Lord in communion, Acts 27, Matthew 28 20. We give 2 Corinthians 9, 7 to uh, 7. Uh, 2 Cor I mean 1 Corinthians 16, 1 and 2. We fellowship, Acts 2, 42, and uh, we we commune with one another. But unfortunately, the Lord is going to say, depart from me, ye that work lawlessness, because you are me, you are I, are practicing sin. Okay. We're practicing sin. Now, when we leave here, there are a lot of people, I've, I've ran into some people that were, that were Christians, and you see them saying amen on Sundays. And when you see them in the world, you don't, you don't even know who they are. You don't even know who they are. But we can't practice sin and, and be... Uh, uh, please the Lord. Amen. Look at um, look at First Peter two. Look at First Peter two. First Peter two. We 
we're going to be reading a little bit more from First Peter two, but we're going to take an excerpt at this for this particular time. First Peter two, and verse number thirteen, the Bible says, "Submit yourself to every ordinance of man, for the Lord's sake, whether it be to the King supreme, or unto governments, or unto them that are sent by Him for the punishment of evildoers, and for the praise of them." That do well. And we're going to go back and read some more of this. We'll go back and read some more of this. So we're going to get a lot of some information from that. In Romans 13. In Romans 13. I would ask a question, but I don't want to ask it. Everybody might raise their hand. I don't know. Romans 13. 3 and, 13 and 1 says, Let every soul be subject unto the, the higher power. For there is no power but of God. The power that be are ordained of God. Amen. So all the powers that be are ordained of God, he said. Whosoever therefore resisted the power, resisted the ordinance of God. And, and they that resisted shall receive to them self-damnation. For rulers are not a terror for good works, but to the evil will thou then not be afraid? Of the power, do that which is good, and they and, and thou shall have praise of the same. For he is the minister of God for thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid. For he bear not the sword in vain. For he is the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon he that him that doeth evil. In our life you and I, some of us work with people that are like faith, that are like-minded faith. Brother Mitch Gibson is a police officer. I don't work with him, you don't work with him, but he might work with some other Christians. And in doing so, working with other Christians, if his share, if, I'm not using Mitch as, you know, I'm not I'm wiping my feet on Mitch. I'm just using him because he's the first one that came to my mind as a master. His sergeant might be a member of the church. His sergeant might tell, come in, tell him, come in the office and, and, and reprimand him. Might tell him to do something that's lawful for him, for, for him to do. And he has to go and do it. He has to go and do it. I guess the point I'm making, many of us have masters that we work for. We, you, you might not call him a master, but he may be a person of like-minded faith. He may not be paying you. He may be a cross-section and y'all doing business together. But y'all have to do business fairly. Or do business fairly with one another. Ephesians 6, 5, 6 says, uh, it talks about master. Let's, let's, go, let's go there and we'll read, a, we'll read uh, uh, Ephesians 6 and 5. Ephesians 6 and 5. Servants, be obedient to them that are your masters according to the flesh, he says, with fear and trembling and singleness of, of, singleness of your heart as unto Christ. Not with eye service, as man pleasing, but as the servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart. You know, there is a there is there are people that work for other people in restaurant organizations, and uh, uh, we are all kinds of different, you know, different kinds of occupations. In the Bible, we have people that were tent makers. Paul was one. He worked with other Christians, and in 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 in, in, in those situations, Paul had to make Paul had to help make tents, and uh, there's a cross section where you have to sell them, you have to do, do kinds of paperwork, and you have to get signatures signed and things of this nature. And you just can't uh, expect to do business without having some type of form of instruction, paperwork that follows your business, that follows it. And so we have a thing today called called contracting. And we contract with one another through signatures and paperwork and that thing and, and such. Say, for instance, I want to do business with Brother Cricket. And, you know, uh, we're, we're brethren. 
And I said, "What, well, brother Craig? Look, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna do this little business, man. I tell you what, you you gonna cut my yard, man. But I tell you what, you I want you to bring me a receipt for it when you finish. Man, I'll cut you up. I ain't bringing you no receipt. Mm. You can pay me cash, but I need a receipt. And I, but I need you know you pay, but you pay me cash. Well, still I need a receipt. I said, oh, I ain't gonna pay you no you know I'm sorry, no receipt, man. I'm come cut your grab when you come home. You leave the money up on, under the mat. I'm gonna pick it up. I ain't, I ain't gonna give you no receipt. You know, but." He wants a receipt. He wants a receipt. So, therefore, yeah, you're trying to maybe skirt taxes or whatever the case might be. He still wants a receipt. Give him a receipt because he wants a receipt. Because now if somebody else came and demanded a receipt, you wouldn't even, you wouldn't even have it. So give him a receipt. And I'm just saying that that's just, we, 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 we deal with one another. We deal with one another just like we deal with those brethren that have buildings around them. That are official. I mean, I have a building around me. I might be a taco joint. I might be sitting out the back of my truck or whatever the case. But I don't have a building around. You may not respect me in the way you respect the other person. Mm -hmm. But we're Christians. Mm -hmm. We're Christians. So we have to deal with one another according to what God has said. Amen. God has said. So let there be no difference. Let there be no difference. Colossians three twenty two says, "Servants, obey your masters according." To the flesh, both ways could be any could be, could be both ways according to the flesh. Colossians four says, "Masters, give unto your servants that which is just and equal. Pay, pay him, pay him what he deserves. Pay him what he deserves. Pay him what he deserves. Even even if he's a stranger, pay him what he deserves." First uh, Timothy six and one and two says. Let as many servants as are under the yoke count their masters worthy of all honor. Amen. All honor. Because Christ said that this order, he put this in place. Christ put it in place. So we, we have to follow it. We have to follow it. Now, I've, I've, been, I've been in, I've read a lot of books. I've read a lot of books on contracting in the past with people and how contract law works you see see how that works and so forth but do you know a handshake determines a contract man you you said you shook somebody's hand you made an agreement with that person That's right. you made an agreement it may be a christian most more likely it might be a christian you know and you know if you tell you what you're sitting there beside a christian brother and you made an agreement with him and you didn't follow through and now he has a problem with you you're sitting there worshiping saying amen He's sitting there, he and your amen. I said, this brother, he ain't even paid me yet. In his mind, so you're making that brother stumble. God is not pleased. Yeah. And I'm just saying, this is, this is something we all have to think about. This is something we all have to think about. Because we have to be right with one another. We're going to look at an example, a very good example in the Bible. And we're gonna, once we read this scripture, these scriptures, it's going to all make sense. Uh, Titus 2, 9 says, Exhort servants to be obedient unto their own masters. I ain't even talk about a master. We don't we don't have a master in that sense though. We do have masters because we're 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 servants either to righteousness or or to sin. Either one. So we know we're we're serving to righteousness. We used to be a servant to sin, but we we're no longer a servant to sin. We no longer. First Peter two eighteen says servants be subject to your master with all Fear. We're going to go back there and we're going to finish off right there. But I want to look at, I want to look at one example. Go to Genesis 39. The lesson's going to be yours in 3039. Brother Hugh P. Miles said, a little dab will do you. He said, it don't take much of, of the Bible. It might take a lot of us being in front of the Bible. It doesn't take much of the Word of God to, con to convince someone. Chapter 39. Starting verse 1. And Joseph was brought down and brought down to Egypt. And Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard of Egypt, brought him, bought him of the hands of the Ishmaelites, which had bought, which had brought him down thither. And the Lord was with Joseph, and he was a, a prosperous man, and he was in the house of of his master, the Egyptian. Now, his master, the Egyptian, he's not a Christian, but he's still in the house of the, 
of the Egyptian. He in the house of a Gentile, straight up. Straight up. You know, some of us be thinking, as soon as we get there, man, we be thinking about what's ours. And I like that over there. It might go with me when I go home. You know? That would be the wrong attitude to have. Joseph wasn't like that. The Bible says that even when Joseph was in this situation, he prospered. Now, he's a slave right now. He's been bought and sold. He's prospered. He said, and his master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord made all that he did to prosper in his hands. Now, Potiphar saw this. That's what Potiphar saw. You don't think that people you work for, see, man, no, this guy around, man, my business is prospering, man. I mean, I'm, I'm pro Have you ever worked for somebody and it was slow out there, and then you started working for them, and all it just picked up, and the work started picking up, you're like, man, it's, it's pretty good. Because you because you're working for them. The Lord see you there. And Joseph found grace in his, in his sight, and he served him, and he made him overseer of all his house, and all that he had put into his hands. All that he had put into his hands. We, we know the story. I ain't got to emphasize these words. And it came to pass from that time, that he had made him overseer in the house and over all that he had, that the, that the Lord <clears throat> blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. And the blessings of the Lord was upon all that he had in the house and in the field. So this man's house prospered while, while Joseph was there greatly. So verse 6 says, and he, and he left all that he had in Joseph's hand. And he knew not aught he had to save. He, he knew not aught he had saved the bread which he did eat. And Joseph was a goodly person and well favored. Now I, I want to read that scripture right there because it kind of threw me a little bit when I read it because the language, the King James language sometimes does that. But I go to another language. In the Bible, the NIV says, from that time, he put in charge of his household, verse 5, in his household, and of all that he owed, the Lord blessed the household of the Egyptian because of Joseph. The blessings of the, the Lord was on every everything Potiphar had, both in the house and in the field. So, so Potiphar left everything he had in Joseph's care, verse 6. Amen. With Joseph in charge, he did not he did not concern himself with anything except the food that he ate. I'll just put it in a you know King James because it's kind of maybe hard to that language kind of throws me up sometimes, so I can go to another one. Verse 7, back in the King James, and it came to pass after these things that his master's wife cast her eyes upon Joseph. And she said, lie with me. Here come trouble. Amen. Here come trouble. You know, what do we do when trouble comes? And that's the thing about it. What, we, what do we do? Do we remain faithful or do we sin? Do we lie? Do we cheat? Do we steal? Just to get over, to get ahead. What do we do? And this is the encouragement that we stay on focus. We stay on path. That's right. We stay on point. Because the Lord still blessed this young man even when this woman... This wicked wife. And that's what she is. Saw Joseph. Now it's very interesting right here that the King James says it a little different. And after a while, his master's wife took notice of Joseph and said, Come to bed with me. Oh. Verse 8 says, But he refused. He refused with me in charge. Amen. He told her, My master does not concern himself with anything in the house. Everything he owns, he has entrusted me to care. So that's, very, that's, that's the King James. Verse number 9 says, There is none greater in this house than I. Neither has he kept back anything from me but thee, because thou art his wife. How then can I do this great wickedness and sin before God? Now this is a, this is a young man. Right, yeah, we. This is a young man, kind of like what we all used to be in, in here. We, we used to be young. Y'all remember that when y'all used to be young? It's when we was a young man. Now the closest thing to young in here now is Javier. 
but he's younger. He's, he's younger than him at this time. He's around about 17 that age. A young man. Do you think today anyone has the strength to do what he did? No. I watched too many shows, and, I was, and I'm like, man, you know what? I was watching one earlier, and this young dude, man, I guess he was married. I don't know if he was married or what. He was staying with somebody, and he had an opportunity to, 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 to increase his game. He was a comedian. I don't know what I say. He might have an opportunity to increase his game, and he was trying to climb the ladder. But in the order he was climbing a ladder, he was taking some folks' clothes off to increase his game. I'm sure a lot of people do that to increase their position in life. Right. It's sad. It's sad that that has to happen. But God will bless you if you remain faithful That's right. and, and don't sin. In our mind, it's easier to start to sin, but it's in our mind, it's just as easy to cut it off and change the thought into something else. Just as easy. So at verse 10 says, And it came to pass that she spake to Joseph day by day. Day by day. I think I missed that before. Day by day. That he hearkened not unto her to lie by her or to be with her. And it came to pass about that time that Joseph went into the house to do his business. And there was none in the man, none of the men of the house there within. That day wasn't nobody there. He could have did it and got away with it. Wasn't nobody there. But he knew God. Still watching him. And he feared God. Right. God, had, God had helped him through a, a mighty, a lot of mighty struggles and challenges that he had before he even got here. And she caught him by his garment saying, lie with me. And he left his garment in her hand and fled and got him out. And it came to pass when she saw that he had left her a garment in her hand and was fled forth, that she came unto, came unto men of her house and spank unto them, saying, See, he has brought, he has brought in in Hebrew unto us to mock us. He came in unto me and to lie with me, and I cried. With a loud voice, lying, lying, lying. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass when he heard that, I lifted up my voice and cried that he left his garment with me, and I fled and got him and got him out. And she light and she laid up, she laid up her garment by her until his Lord came home. And she spanked unto him according to her, her according to these words saying the hebrew servant which thou hast brought unto me unto us came in unto me and mocked me and it came to pass as i lifted up my voice and cried that he lifted he left his garment with me and fled out and it came to pass when his master heard the words of his wife which he spake unto him saying after this manner did thy servant to me that his wrath was kindled and Joseph's master took him and put him into the prison in a place where the king's prisoners were bought and he was there in prison he was there in the prison with the rest of the Gentiles the rest of the prisoners no different no different okay. but the Lord the Lord we're gonna read this one and we're gonna go somewhere else and the Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy and gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. Even in prison, the Lord is still watching over Joseph. Yeah. And the keeper of the prison committed, committed to Joseph's hand all the prisoners that were in the prison. And whatsoever they did, there he was the doer of it. The keeper of the prison, the keeper, the keeper of the prison looked not to anything that was under his hand. Because the Lord was with him. And, and that which he did, the Lord made to prosper. The Lord made him to prosper even when he went to prison. And he was doing good. He did good. He didn't do bad. Let's go, let's go back to Peter. We're going to close in Peter. He didn't do bad. Can somebody punish you for doing good? And you did good, and somebody punished you for it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Y'all know what I'm talking about? Somebody, 
Somebody said, well, you're doing too much. Are you, why you do that? Why you stop and help him? Or why you do that? Why you do? That's good. You both smile. You both smile. Keep on rolling. Mm. Both smile. And keep on rolling. Look at First Peter. Amen. First Peter two. Because mm. I mean, I, when you think about it, you say, well, you know what? This is general now. I'm gonna talk about nobody. So I hope nobody say, hey, are you talking about me? Well, you know, if, 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 I mean, I'm not talking about nobody. I mean, got nobody name. I ain't say nobody name. But now, if you go out and really do the dirt, then you should really get persecuted for that. But you going out, you doing good. Mm -hmm. Like doing good in the neighborhood, whatever the case might be. Like doing good. Look at First Peter two. This is my Bible to talk about. I don't know about yours, but we're gonna look at First Peter. I've been using the phone so much, the Bible. Got to figure out the Bible again. First Peter two. Um, we're gonna start at verse thirteen again because we can read the whole the whole chapter. The whole chapter is good, but we're gonna start at thirteen. We're gonna finish in, in uh, this chapter right here. The Bible says, "Submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whether it be to the king supreme or unto governors, or unto them that are sent to sent by him." For the punishment of evildoers, and for the praise of them that do well. So, you know, unfortunately, we still got to pay taxes. I hate paying taxes, and I can't wait to the day when they stop, when they shut down the you know who, when they shut them down. I can't wait. I hope I live to see it. It says, "For so, for so is the will of God, that with well doing you may be put to silence." The ignorant and foolish man for well doing. He says, as free and not using your liberty for a cloak, mm -hmm. your cloak of maliciousness, but as the servant of God. Honor all men, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the king. Servants be subject to your masters with all fear, not only to the good and gentle, but also to the forward mm -hmm. or the crooked. All the crooks. That's a hard thing, right? You know, why I got to do this? Why I got to do this to the to the righteous? You got to still got to do it to them because you got to do it to both. Got to do it to both. Mm -hmm. He said, "For this is thank thank worthy if a man for conscience toward God endure grief suffering wrongfully." That's what Joseph did. That's right. He didn't do it wrongfully, man. He, he didn't do nothing wrong. Mm -hmm. He didn't even do nothing to his brother. Just had a dream. This little dude having a dream, and we're going to be his service. Ha! Huh. We got something for him. Verse 20 says, For what glory is it if when you be buffeted for your faults, ye shall take it patiently? But if when you do well and suffer for it, you take it patiently, this is acceptable with God. That's the part I want to kind of get to. We got to, be, we got to, we got to accept it, whether it's good or bad, whether it's bad. Amen. Was bad because we're gonna he's gonna find out right here when we finish reading. For even hereunto were you called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that you should follow his steps. I think it's a hard pill to follow. It's a hard pill to follow. It's like all week long you worked hard and you want good news. Well, this is good news. All week long you work for a check, you get the check, and it might not be the amount you wanted, but it's good you got a check, man. Somebody didn't get one. You got one. Who did not sin, neither was God found in his mouth. Who when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he, when he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judged righteously. Amen. Who, his own, who his own self bare our sins in his own body on the tree. That we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness, by whom stripes ye are healed. For ye were all sheep going astray, but are now returned unto the shepherd and bishop of your soul. That is a short version of my lesson. And I hope that the lesson is edifying and uplifting Amen. because. The person 
that says this, that God says this too, depart from me, ye that work iniquity, a lawlessness, could be anybody in here, could be any one of us. So let's, let's not forget that. But as we get ready to close, the lesson is yours. If you would like to be a Christian, you can be one. Should have been on. The death, the burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Uh, this is a, a part of what we need to be in order to obey all these commandments. Without the Holy Spirit, uh, uh, Romans 5 and 8 says, there's no way that, that we can understand because our flesh gets in the way. So, so once we hear the gospel and we, and we believe it, then we must be willing to repent. Luke 13, 3 and 5. We repent of what? Our sins, going to the wrong church, believing that it's okay to, 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 for women to preach, okay to, to have musical instruments and, and worship. It's not okay to be at the worship on, on the Sabbath day, which is Saturday. We have to worship on Sunday. We read these instructions in the Bible. The Bible told Timothy, Paul told Timothy while he was away, give attention to reading. Because somebody going to tell you something, but you got to give attention to reading. Reading. So therefore, we must repent. We must be able to confess our sin that I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. That's what your sin is. You can't, he don't want you to confess every sin that you made. Because you're gonna miss one. That's right. You're gonna miss one. And so, uh, once the confession is made, then then we have to be baptized. Acts two and thirty-eight. The Ethiopian eunuch was baptized. Acts eight twenty-six and following. Baptized. After that, you have to read more. We have to go back over to Acts two. Acts two, the second chapter. The Bible says, once you're baptized, Acts two and thirty-eight. You drop down the verse, last verse, Acts two and forty-seven. Is the Lord asked to the church daily, such as should be saved. Who? What does He add them to? He adds them to the church of Christ. We find that in Romans 16, 16. Not only that, we find in uh, uh, Matthew 17 and Matthew 16, if you read, that Peter tried to build three churches. And he couldn't build them. The Lord didn't allow it. So if you're, if you're a Christian, you can, you can repent, uh, 1 John 1 through 8, of your sins. You don't have to get rebaptized again. Just confess our faults one to another. If you have a fault with a brother or sister, go talk to him or go send him a text or email or call him on the phone. Straighten it out. Don't come to the Lord or to his office. And you have all against your brother. Amen. God bless you. That's our lesson tonight. Go and pray to help someone. Uh, if you want to hear more, then reach out to, uh, to, the, to, uh, to uh, us on, on, the, on the YouTube. Uh, our brothers uh, are very...